Northwestern on Serving Northwestern Ontario for 50 years, this is Thunder Bay Television CKPR, celebrating together. From Thunder Bay's news source, the TV News Hour. Labor peace finally looms following the extended NHL lockout. No end in sight as the region struggles with the heat wave. And a city man looks for answers following a vicious pit bull attack. Good evening, I'm Lindsay Arnold. Thanks for being with us tonight. Well, it is welcome relief to divert everyone's attention from the heat. Some positive news from the ice. The NHL and its players have finally reached a tentative new contract agreement. It hasn't been ratified yet, but it's almost certain that the league will resume operations for next season. Mark Connolly reports. It's a stop by the Tampa Bay Lightning and Calgary Flames were the last teams to play an NHL game. When the league returns to the ice this fall, the teams will play under a new set of financial rules. Tampa Bay Lightning have won the Stanley Cup. The new agreement is for six years and will roll back salaries for players still under contract by 24%. That means the Edmonton Oilers' Eric Brewer will go from $2.5 million to $1.9 million. Teams will operate under a salary cap, which limits the total amount a team is allowed to pay its players. No team will be allowed to spend more than $39 million a year, and each team has to spend at least $21.5 million. No one player on the team can make more than 20% of that cap. Rookie salaries would be capped at $850,000. That means whoever gets Sidney Crosby will get the deal of the century. Uh, it's not a big issue with me. Uh, I want to play in the NHL, so uh, just want to have a good summer and make sure I'm ready. Uh, it's exciting at the same time knowing there's going to be a draft and uh, just going through that experience, so I'm just excited for that. The players didn't win much in this deal, but free agency is one thing they did get. The age of eligibility will drop from 31 years to age 27 by 2007. That means players will be able to shop themselves to other teams while in their prime. And rookies entering the league this season will be eligible for free agency after seven years of service. That could be age 25 for a player like Crosby. There will also be revenue sharing where the top 10 richest teams will contribute to a pool shared by the 10 poorest teams in terms of revenue. The Rangers and Leafs would be paying while teams like Columbus and Phoenix would collect. While it appears the NHL has come away with a big win over the players, it may have paid a big price. Teams have lost millions by taking a year off and there's no guarantee fans will flock back to the arenas when the season resumes this fall. Mark Connolly, CBC News, Edmonton. And Randy Sheffy will have reaction to the announced agreement coming up a little later in tonight's sports report. As the heat streak in Thunder Bay continues, it has been a very uncomfortable last few days for those that work outdoors. Many landscapers and construction workers say it's been hard to beat the heat. The climbing temperatures are also causing a rising fire hazard. The MNR is on its toes waiting for new fire activity to start. Ken O'Reilly has more. As the temperature across the northwest goes up, so does the fire hazard. Mitch Miller with the Ministry of Natural Resources says they expect to see more fire activity in the upcoming weeks. Miller says right now there is a lot of potential for new lightning caused fires. Once we get uh, drier weather, once the air dries out, then we're going to start seeing some of those lightning strikes pop up, turn into fires and uh, we'll be quite active. Miller says while anyone can find a large fire, it's the smaller ones that are harder to detect, and that's the main concern right now. There is a toll-free fire reporting hotline for people who do find a fire, want to report a smoke. We also encourage people under these conditions to be very careful with outdoor fires. Don't leave your fires unattended. Be careful with your smoky materials because uh, sparks, of course, are, are the start of uh, forest fire. Miller says surprisingly this spring has seen the lowest amount of fire activity in a long time. He says the largest fire so far in the northwest is the Nipigon 20, which continues to burn, but crews have gained the upper hand for now. And as the warm temperatures affect the potential for fires, it's also creating an uncomfortable work condition for many outdoor workers. Not everyone has the option of finding an air-conditioned place to cool down. An employee at this construction site almost passed out yesterday due to the heat. Uh, lots of water. 
Lots of water with Crystal Light. Well, I drink lots of water and uh, take breaks, eh? Every once in a while when you're sitting out in the sun too much. Man's best friend is also not immune to the extreme heat. Veterinarian Dr. John McPherson says times like this can be life-threatening for your pet. He says it's important to keep them in a well-ventilated place with water. McPherson urges people not to leave your pets in the vehicle. He says you can also check your pet's temperature. Anything over 41 degrees is a concern, and the animal should be taken to the vet. From Thunder Bay's news source, I'm Jenna Riley. Now, as an added note, due to the increased fire hazard, the municipality of Oliver Papunj is canceling all burning permits, including incinerator permits. Those permits will be issued again only after a reduction in the fire hazard. Community leaders from across the region got an inside look at the MNR's Thunder Bay Fire Base today. It was an opportunity for local politicians and emergency response officials to see just how the MNR deals with the immense challenge of managing forest fires across the Northwest. Economy Fire Chief Amy Spencer says the tour was very educational. Almost oh, definitely, even the dispatch part where you get to see how they plan their dispatches and they can come and assist you and uh, uh, move resources to give you further assistance is excellent. One of the highlights of the tour was an inside look at some of the aircraft the MNR uses. This giant water bomber dumps over 6,000 pounds of water in a single run and takes only 12 seconds to refill. MNR firefighter Jennifer Klotik says they've had a great response from the visiting leaders. People have been in awe simply because they don't realize how much actually goes into the term firefighter or our fire um, management headquarters and, and service center, what, act what it actually entails to be a part of this organization. The fire base also opened its doors to the public throughout this afternoon. Now back to the heat for just a moment. Experts say Ontarians could be in for a shock when they see their next electricity bill. The independent electricity system operator says the next few bills will really draw awareness to a two-tier pricing plan introduced last year. Spokesperson Terry Young says consumers will soon find out the hard way that it costs a lot to keep cool. During the summer, demand for hydro is hitting record levels as the temperatures continue to soar. A bit of a scare last night in the north downtown area. A gas leak was noticed around 6 o'clock near the intersection of Camelot and Cumberland Streets. It prompted firefighters to temporarily evacuate the area and block off traffic. Gas company workers responded to the scene and quickly brought the situation under control. It's likely the leak occurred as a result of street construction taking place in that area. The Northwestern Health Unit continues to keep a close eye on the drinking water sources in the Dryden area. This follows tests that show uranium levels in water drawn from local wells has been dangerously high. The town of Dryden is also continuing to monitor the situation. It's asked residents that do use wells to bring their water in for testing. Mayor Ann Kraslowski says so far the number of wells that have tested positive for high uranium concentrations has not been enough to cause a panic. I don't think the numbers are as high as they were feared to be. Um, I think they're okay. We just need to monitor the situation and make sure that people take the precautions that are set out by the Northwestern Health Unit. The uranium found in the wells is believed to be from naturally occurring sources. The health risks associated with a high concentration of uranium are still being looked into. A Thunder Bay man is looking for answers following a vicious pit bull attack Monday night that resulted in the death of his pet dog. Norman Bates says he and his wife were leaving their Roland Street apartment around 10.30 Monday night with their pet dog Buster when they were confronted by the pit bull. The pit bull grabbed their pet and began to violently shake the smaller dog despite repeated efforts to get it to let go. Buster, who was 12, died in the attack. Bates says it's an incident that should never have happened, especially since there were complaints about the dog in the past. And he says the damage could have been even worse. I have a four-year-old grandson that often comes with us. He could have been holding Buster when that happened. When is it enough? When are people going to stop breeding these dogs that kill? Thunder Bay Animal Control officials say their investigation has turned up no record of previous incidents involving the pit bull, but the dog's owner now faces charges for failing to license the animal and allowing it to run at large. He will also have to appear at a hearing to determine whether the dog should be disposed of. In the meantime, the pit bull has been released to its owner and is to be kept in quarantine. Bates says regardless of the outcome, it will do nothing to bring back Buster, who he calls a cherished member of the family. And a final note on that story, new legislation regulating pit bulls in Ontario does not come into effect until the end of August. Animal Control says if the owner had been charged under that legislation, he could be subject to fines as high as $10,000, and a justice would have no option but to order the dog destroyed. 
Another missing teen to tell you about this evening. Thunder Bay police are trying to determine the whereabouts of 16-year-old Bronson Wawia. Police say Bronson hasn't been seen since last Friday. He's described as being 5 foot 11 and 160 pounds with short brown hair and brown eyes. He was last seen riding an 18-speed silver bicycle with red forks. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of Bronson Wawia is asked to contact Thunder Bay police. Thunder Bay's Confederation College is getting some federal help in developing a new virtual data warehouse. Fednor has announced a $220,000 grant for the project that will allow the college to store and access data using a central portal connected to the internet. The virtual data warehouse is to be located in the college's Forestry Center and would be available to a variety of organizations and agencies. The Fort William First Nation, the Lake Superior First Nations Development Trust, and the municipalities of Marathon and Manitowoc are all partners in the project with the college. Members of the Gulf Bay Indian Band are heading back to the polls. This follows a decision by Indian and Northern Affairs Canada to overturn the results of the band election held last November. INAC officials found that three of the people elected to hold band council positions were ineligible to run because they did not reside on the reserve at the time of their nomination. The election of all nine band councillors has been set aside. A nomination meeting has now been scheduled for Wednesday, July 20th. An election will be held Friday, August the 12th. Ontario's government casinos have brought in billions of dollars in revenue, but at what cost? For one man, it almost cost him his life. He's now suing the government, accusing it of feeding his gambling addiction. Gus Kim reports. Go to any Ontario casino and you'll hear sounds of someone winning big. But beyond the glitter and exciting ambiance are deeply troubling stories. People like Gabe Macaluso, so addicted to gambling, he tried taking his life. It was terrible. It, uh, I felt like a uh, runaway locomotive. I couldn't stop. Um, and I felt the only way out uh, was to uh, take my life. Ontario casinos generate billions of dollars a year. By some estimates, there are 350,000 Ontarian gambling addicts. You become powerless. Take Gabe. He used to run Hamilton's entertainment facilities and hobnob with stars like Tony Bennett and you too. But this convention executive got hooked on gambling. At first, this was all just innocent fun, but Gabe slowly became a junkie. Yeah, it was terrible. Over five years, Gabe would gamble away $1 million, most of it borrowed money. I was there uh, one time, uh, well over 24 hours, and, uh, and I was falling asleep at the table and actually closing my eyes, and I, had, and I was betting. I mean, that's, that's how far gone I was. Researchers say gambling can be just as addictive as any hardcore substance abuse. In fact, here at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health, they're right now treating a thousand problem gamblers who came here for help because they just could not stop. It makes people feel powerful. Therapist Nina Littman-Sharp has treated hundreds of gambling junkies. She says problems arise with the thrill of winning being combined with the desperation of crushing death. The belief is that they're going to win again. They see people winning um, all around them, and they say, if I could just do that, then I could stop. Gabe is now suing the government, claiming its casinos actually encourage addiction. Those allegations have yet to be proven in court. Regardless, he says coming clean and staying clean was not easy. Uh, my children uh, basically said, uh, Dad, we, uh, we love you, and uh, um, we'll love you more if, uh, if you get better. Something that thousands of other Ontarians are also trying to do. This is Global's Gus Kim reporting. Kids, uh... It's off to Brazil for a Hillcrest High School student as he participates in a Junior Team Canada trade mission. Business student Will Langua will participate in the August 10th to 27th excursion. It will visit the cities of Sao Paulo, Belo Horizonte and Rio de Janeiro. Team members will network with government, business and education leaders and gather key market information. Upon their return to Canada, they'll produce reports for Canadian companies looking to expand operations in Brazil. Langua is the first student from Thunder Bay to be selected for such an honor. Well, it's an event whose existence appeared very much in doubt earlier this year, but it now appears to be back perhaps better than ever. The 2005 Thunder Bay Fringe Festival is set to kick off tomorrow. A lack of volunteers and other problems led to an announcement that the event would be discontinued. But some of the involved refused to give up and attracted fresh help to reinvigorate the festival. A full roster of acts has been lined up and the performances have moved to a new venue the former movie theater complex in Victoriaville Centre. A gala opening is planned for tomorrow night. And a young group of cyclists with a very important message was in Thunder Bay today. Members from the Otisha Project spent the day talking to youth 
about the importance of being environmentally conscious. The cyclists had been on the road for over five months on their way from Vancouver to Newfoundland, stopping along the way to share their message. Cyclist Adele Woodyard says everybody can make a difference. Um, we just believe that everyone, whatever age you are, um, can take actions in your daily life that can have a positive impact on the world, environmentally speaking, and also as far as, um, yeah, just like, yeah, we can all make a positive difference with our daily actions. And if you're wondering what Otisha means, as yeah. I'm sure you are, it is Swahili for reason to dream. Now that group will be at Waverly Park later on this evening, sharing their message through performances and discussion. Thank you for letting me know what that meant. Mm -hmm. I was no. curious, and so no. was everybody else out there, I'm sure. Anyway, time now for our first look at weather. Jen, I'm surprised you're doing weather from outside. You are very brave. It's you're like this every day, and it's not going to change, by the way, either. So you have to be very creative about ways to keep cool. Um, you know, a couple days ago, I saw a report on this guy that made his own air conditioner. The only part of the report, though, that I saw was that ice was involved. So if anyone's seen it, let me know what, 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 what's the other process, because there's more to that. And in the end, you get to save money, right? Because it was a non-electric uh, air conditioner. Anyway, let's take a look at our view from the tower cam. It is uh, unbelievably hot. Another, you know, that's everyday story lately. Uh, clear skies in the city at this hour. It's at uh, 28 Celsius, 83 Fahrenheit. Wind southeast, 13 kilometers an hour. So that is really not making a difference in the temperature. The barometer 101.8 and falling. Humidity 55%. Today's high 28 and overnight low we're looking at uh, 19. Right now across the region, sunshine everywhere. It is scorching. 29 in Kenora, Sioux Lookout 29, Armstrong 27, Upsala 27, Geraldton 25, sunshine there as well. Atacokan 29, Marathon 27, a little bit of cloud cover in Houghton at 28. In Duluth, it's sunshine as well, 28. Port Francis 29, Dryden 29, Red Lake 30. Big Trout Lake 26, Pickle Lake at 27, Terrace Bay Sunshine there 27, and Sault Ste. Marie 29. Very warm weather as well. Uh, just to show you what happened today in our regional satellite map, really, you know, not a lot. It, it's looking a little boring, but boring is good when it comes to weather because that means uh, no storms or anything like that on the way. And uh, basically what's happening today is what's going to be happening for the rest of the week. Stay tuned in the weather forecast. We'll explain what's happening with this warm air mass above us when it's going to go away. Okay? okay. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, All right, much, you're welcome. Jen. Well, the much-anticipated return of the space shuttle didn't come off exactly as planned today. We'll tell you why right after these words. He's also our flight engineer. And he'll be sitting in the uh, aft center seat undergoing suit-up preparations. Uh, now. I've always loved cars. I love selling cars. We constantly search the market for the very best values and bring them home to you. Cars, trucks, vans, always a great selection. A great reason to shop Peterson's, but there's many more. On the spot bank and credit union financing. Payments to fit your budget. No add-ons or hidden costs. Plus car proof. Now get the complete history of your vehicle. You'll also get low rate financing. And if credit's a problem, Peterson's will help. So shop happy. Shop Peterson's for top value and great choices in cars, trucks, and vans. I really do love cars. Looking for a wood stove or fireplace? Why? Why should you buy from Thunder Bay Fireplaces? Product? We have the industry's best products, including RSF fireplaces and Pacific Energy wood stoves. Price? As consumers too, we try and make our prices unbeatably competitive. Knowledge and service? Ask around. We're wet certified and have a reputation for knowing our product and taking care of our customers before and after the sale. There's no reason to buy anywhere else but Thunder Bay Fireplaces. Our quality and service will not be undersold. I guarantee it. Colossimo's Music Store invites everyone to their annual year-end inventory clearance. Everything in the store is priced to go. Save 40% off all drums and cymbals. All Godin, Siegel, Simon & Patrick, Norman, and a and guitars are 40% off. All accessories including strings, music, amplifiers are 20% off. Colossimo's doesn't want to count it, so they have to move it. Hurry in for best selection. Colossimo Music Store's year-end sale. Don't miss it. You've promised yourself you'd get your will and powers of attorney done, but as we all get older, the need becomes more immediate. At Rennie Larson Law Office, we make it easy and convenient for you. That's why we do after-hours house calls, where it's comfortable and convenient for you and your family. Our team of professionals answer all your questions and listen to your concerns. Don't let time be your number one excuse. Get your will and powers of attorney done today. 
call Rennie Larson Law Office at 624-2300. Just waiting for you. Your news on demand. TBTV.com. Everywhere you are. Closed captioning supplied in part by Tim Horton's white chocolate macadamia nut and caramel chocolate pecan cookies. Like all their cookies, they're freshly baked throughout the day. And welcome back. A delay in today's return of the space shuttle just hours before the planned liftoff of the shuttle Discovery. NASA officials scrubbed the launch. That's because the dis they discovered a problem with a fuel tank sensor. Discovery's astronauts had already begun their trademark journey for launch day, suiting up and buckling in. Good afternoon, Eileen. Minor technical glitches overnight had been repaired and the countdown begun when suddenly heavy thunderstorms moved in over the launch pad. But even they passed. It was, in the end, the malfunction of a tiny fuel sensor that led NASA to scrub the launch. This has nothing to do with jitters. This is a, a very obvious thing to look at. It's something we check every launch, and uh, if it's malfunctioning, we're not ready to go. This the sensor is needed to send a cutoff signal to the Almost engines when fuel holding. is low. Without it, the engines Built could have been destroyed. NASA's officials vowed to be extra vigilant, extra cautious, after the re-entry explosion of Columbia two years ago. When you look at what uh, the plans are, where NASA wants to, well, where NASA's been, where we've come from, with both accidents, if you like, and then where we're going to go, today has has to work. So unfortunately, even though it looked like the weather was starting to come together for us, uh, the vehicle, the eco-sensors, uh, for some reason, did not behave today, and so we're going to have to scrub this launch attempt. And so the six Americans and one Japanese astronaut must try again another day. So the launch has been postponed, and it's not clear for how long. The day of redemption that NASA officials had so hoped for will have to wait a little longer. David Common, CBC News at the Kennedy Space Center. A frightening story unfolding in Western Canada. An Edmonton man is pleading for the safe return of his wife. 29-year-old Leanne White, who's four months pregnant, didn't show up for work yesterday. Her car was found a short time later with the purse and keys inside. White's disappearance has prompted an intensive search by police and civilian volunteers in the couple's neighborhood. There were four men from northern England living what seemed to be ordinary lives. But what police say they did almost one week ago was anything but. Today, new details are emerging about the four suspects in London's transit bombings as police try to piece together the bomber's plan. This may be one of the most complex investigations the Metropolitan Police ever had to handle. All night, police carried out controlled explosions in Luton. Well, it's certainly a matter of safety, and we've known that there's a volatile substance in the vehicle. This morning, they removed this car believed to be linked to Thursday's bombings. After identifying the suspected suicide bombers, the police are now focusing on who masterminded the attacks. Were the men acting alone, or were they instructed by some sort of leaders from Britain or from abroad? We need to find out who is doing the recruitment, who are the handlers, who are the people that are putting together the cell, giving it the financing, providing the logistics. They are the individuals that are the most dangerous ones because they're the organizers. This morning, forensic teams continue to search the homes of the alleged bombers. So far, the names of three of them have been revealed. The youngest one was 19 and is believed to have blown himself up in the bus. Today, tabloids showed the birth certificate of one of them, 22-year-old Shazad Tanweer from Leeds. Police believe he died in the Aldgate tube explosion. His family cannot believe the news. He was a very kind and caring person. He was respected by everybody, and he respected everybody. People just cannot believe there could be homegrown suicide bombers in their community. The fact that all the suspects were raised in Britain, attended school here, and were part of the British society has sent shockwave through this country. Today, the first British-born Muslim MP met with the Prime Minister. He had this message. People are appalled. They're shocked. What I'm sensing is there's a great appetite from within the Muslim community to move beyond condemnation of this, but to actually confront some of the rhetoric that manifested itself in the horrific terrorist atrocities that we saw last Thursday. And I think this is the most profound challenge that the British Muslim community has ever faced. In the House of Commons, Tony Blair said the attacks were not an isolated act. It is an extreme and evil ideology whose roots lie in a perverted 
and poisonous misinterpretation of the religion of Islam. Meanwhile, tributes continue to be laid out at King's Cross tube station as more names of the victims are being released to the public. Azeb Oligurgis, CBC News, London. Police in Granada are ordering people off the streets and businesses closed as Tropical Storm Emily gets closer to the island. People living there are still recovering from devastation of Hurricane Ivan last year, which also killed 39 people. The National Hurricane Center in Miami says the storm isn't expected to become a hurricane before it makes landfall. In Pakistan, a peaceful overnight train ride turned into a nightmare. Sleeping passengers were jolted awake to find loved ones missing, cars crumpled, and more than 100 bodies lying all around them. Three trains collided early this morning in a remote village about 600 kilometers northeast of Karachi. At least 128 people are dead, and that number is rising. Eyewitnesses describe scenes of utter carnage at the site in Sindh province where the accident took place. Bodies and crash debris lay strewn all around. A train bound for the southern city of Karachi careered into the rear of a sitting train, packed with passengers and undergoing mid-journey repairs. At least three carriages were then pitched into the path of a third oncoming train, heading in the opposite direction. It all happened just before sunrise, as the men, women and children on board slept. The army has been coordinating rescue efforts, which were initially slowed by the remoteness of the crash site. Rescue teams using electric cutting gear were trying to free dozens of passengers still trapped inside the twisted wreckage of their carriages. The authorities expect the casualty figures to rise. President Musharraf has ordered an investigation, but already at least one railways official blamed human error on the part of one of the drivers. And if at all there is a negligence on the part of anyone, that individual or individuals must be punished. Pakistan is no stranger to train crashes involving multiple deaths. Casualty figures are often so high because trains are packed with far greater numbers of people than they were designed for. The end of the 1980s and the start of the 1990s saw the most serious recent accidents, with around 700 people killed in three separate crashes, one of them near the site of Wednesday's incident. For CBC News, this is Paul Anderson in Islamabad. In the Iraqi capital, Baghdad, some children were enjoying a moment of innocence today when their world shattered. U.S. soldiers were handing out candy to the youngsters when a suicide bomber struck. At least 27 people were killed, many of them children. Witnesses say the bomber drove a car packed with explosives up to an American Humvee. The force of the explosion destroyed nearby buildings. As many as 67 people were wounded. Funerals have already been held for some of the victims. An immediate reaction from Israel's Prime Minister to yesterday's suicide bombing at a shopping mall. Ariel Sharon ordered his forces to wage what he calls a relentless attack against the militant group Islamic Jihad. The group claimed responsibility for yesterday's attack that killed four Israelis and wounded several others. Early this morning, Israeli forces raided the Palestinian town of Tukaram. One Palestinian police officer was shot dead as troops hunted for Islamic Jihad members. At least five militants were arrested. Islamic Jihad said yesterday's attack was in response to Israel's raids on wanted militants. A U.S. district judge has sentenced Bernie Evers to 25 years in prison with no parole, but the possibility of a few months off for good behavior. Former WorldCom head Bernie Evers will be 64 next month, though he'll be behind bars until he's 89. The judge told the court that the fraud Evers committed was no ordinary fraud, but she did take his charitable works into account. Last month, a jury found him guilty for his part in the $11 billion scandal that sent WorldCom spiraling into bankruptcy. During the case, Evers tried to pass himself off as a folksy boss who was unaware of the creative accounting his underlings were doing. But jurors didn't buy what's now become known as Evers' aw shucks defense. Prosecutors were pressing for a life sentence. And one of the most famous members of one of the world's most famous species has died. May May, seen here in better days, was a revered elder statesperson in the giant panda world. She was 36 when she died yesterday. That's the equivalent of 108 in people years. And now people are lining up to pay their last respects to Mei Mei. She's lying in state at the zoo in China where she died. You're watching the TV News Hour from Thunder Bay's News Source.
Lindsay, here's one of the few people not excited about the return of the NHL, but oh, several I people am. are. Randy Sheffy has reactions for you right after these words. I was going to say. All right, and welcome back. Now, Randy, what does this mean for NHL, like the local players? Well, for Eric Stahl, Taylor Pyatt, Trevor Lotowski, yep. Patrick Sharp, people like that, it means paychecks again. Finally. Once they start playing hockey, they'll ratify this deal. Both sides are expected to do that. And happy faces, too, probably. I think they'll be doing some celebrating in the city tonight. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's what every NHL fan has been waiting for. It took 301 days, but it's finally over as... Uh, the NHL and its Players Association have reached a tentative six-year agreement. It's believed the upper limit on the salary cap will be $39 million. The entry draft featuring Sidney Crosby is expected to be held, they say, July 30th in Ottawa. We have reaction from NHL legend and current player agent Bobby Orr. To get back to work, uh, get this game back to where it should be. And we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, you know, the team management and the, the players have got to get together and say, hey, let's get our game back to where it should be. Uh, we've agreed to a deal. Forget the complaining. Let's just get on with it. And hopefully that's what will happen. Not to mention the player representatives, of course, are going to have to go through the deal as well. And that may take some time, judging by some of the details that are going to be in this deal. I mean, uh, have you thought very much about how the landscape is going to change as far as some of the clients that maybe you're going to represent? Well, we, we're we really not sure yet what the agreement's <laughs> going to say. They've They've locked themselves in a room like they should have uh, probably should have done a long time ago but they've locked themselves in a room so I don't I mean we get little bits and pieces coming out but we really don't know what the agreement is going to say yet uh, I think it will be um, I don't know complicated but there's gonna be a lot of work to do but uh, we're ready uh, you know we have we have a number of contracts we must do and, and I think the GM's that we will be doing them with are ready to go and uh, it, it'll be worked out but it's uh, it's gonna be different the Northwoods League All-Star Game goes tonight in Alexandria, Minnesota. Four members of the Border Cats, pitchers Casey O'Rourke, Sean Williams, Blake Brannon, and second baseman J.R. Voyles will suit up for the North Division squad. League play resumes Friday night for the Cats in lacrosse. At the Midsummer Major League Classic, the American League maintained its dominance over the Nationals last night in Detroit. Brian Roberts and the American League haven't lost the Midsummer Classic in eight years, and they're a pretty good bet to keep that streak going as Miguel Tejada deposits a high John Smoltz pitch deep to left center, giving the junior circuit the early lead in the second inning. In the third, Roy Oswald comes on only to see David Ortiz hammer a long single off the base of the right field wall, allowing his Red Sox teammate Johnny Damon to trot in with run number two. Tejada becomes an early candidate for game MVP as he drives in A-Rod from third despite grounding out to short. And it's 3-0 for the American League after three. This one has Rout written all over and after Ichiro, who set the record for most hits in the season last year with 268, has another one singling the right to bring home Jason Veritek and Brian Roberts. That increased the lead to 5-0 for the American League. In the sixth, it's suddenly a 7-0 game as Mark Teixeira strikes off. Dontrell Willis with the big fly in the right field. That added a couple. Next inning, the senior circuit is finally on the score sheet. Courtesy of this long ball by the Braves, Andrew Jones off Kenny Rogers. But the American League will hang on for the 7-5 victory and home field advantage for the World Series. The Thunder Bay All-Stars will face the defending champs, the Ottawa Cobras, tonight at the Provincial Big League Championships in the nation's capital. They rallied from four runs down to edge Windsor last night, 5-4. Now here's your daily recap of last night's District 3 Little League action throughout the city. We'll begin our recap in the major division as Westford patted its record to 2-0, out slugging the winless Port Arthur Continentals 11-5. The Port Arthur Nationals scored their third straight win, clubbing six homers in a one-sided 27-1 thrashing over Current River. Hunter Galloway swatted a pair, giving him five homers in only three games. In minor play, the Port Arthur Nationals' Ryan McQueen scored five times, leading his team to its second straight W, 24-6 over Current River, while the Port Arthur Continentals drubbed the Fort William Americans 21-2. Quinn Boyle tossed a one-hitter for the winners. 
And in the junior division, Westford evened its record at one, knocking off Current River 8-2. Corey McAllister tossed a three-hitter and chipped in with a couple runs batted in. The other game saw the Fort Arthur Continentals break into the win column with a 2-1 victory over the Fort William Americans. Craig Steele struck out 13 while limiting the Americans to only four hits. Thunder Bay's Kyler Murphy opened with a 75. That's eight shots off the lead at the Ontario Amateur Golf Championships in Port Stanley. Hank Wilkie and Marathon's Darcy Donaldson fired 77, so they trail by 10. And the third major of the year on the PGA Tour starts tomorrow in St. Andrews, Scotland. Mike Weir and Stephen Ames carry Canadian hopes. This will mark the final competitive event for the legendary Jack Nicklaus. And if you're looking for an underdog to win it all, New Zealand's Michael Campbell would be a pretty good candidate. Each of the last six men to lift the claret jug here were already major champions, and that's good news for the recent U.S. Open winner, Michael Campbell, who believes he now has the experience to succeed at the home of golf. Experience in the sense of winning a major, because you know, the, the last eight holes, the last nine holes really at Pinehurst for me was uh, made me completely as a player, I think, because... You know, I've never been in that situation before. It wasn't quite sure how, how I actually handled the situation. I handled it well. I mean, I had the best player in the world breathing down my neck, you know, and, uh, and I was making all these birdies and a few bogeys here and there. But, but all in all, I'm so proud on how, on how I actually handled the last you know, nine holes. Campbell has come close at St Andrews before. Desperately close. In 1995, he shot a disastrous 76 on Sunday, blowing a three-shot lead and trailing in joint third place behind John Daly and Constantino Rocca. But the memories of that week will only inspire him this time around. It's um, so nice to come here, St Andrews. I played well 10 years ago. Didn't quite get there. Um, tripped over the last hurdle, you could say. And uh, but this time around, I'm more prepared mentally and physically. And it's, it's so nice to be part of this uh, this year's Open. There's no secret in anything, really. You just got to get lucky. <laughs> just avoid those bunkers, that's all. I mean, look, when, when Tiger won, you know, 2,000, five years ago, he, he didn't hit in the bunker. So that's the, that's the, our aim, well, my aim really is to miss every bunker out there. But it's a type of golf course where you need a bit of luck. That's the bottom line, um, lucky bounces. And um, you create your own luck, and uh, hopefully it's uh, going to go my way. Halifax is getting ready to host the LPGA's Canadian Open starting tomorrow. Many of the tour's big names are bypassing the event, which should open up the field for a Canadian to perhaps win it all. For 80,000 fans to watch the tournament, but the weather and the lack of big names could keep numbers down. The top golfers like Annika Sorenstam and Christy Kerr will not be here. In fact, only two of the top ten possibly will be here. Number 12 on the money list is Heather Bowie. She won the Jamie Farr Classic over the weekend. She will be here. But it is a disappointment to organizers that some of the top golfers will not take part in the Canadian Open. Yes, the big names may not be there, but it is an event. If you look back at the uh, U.S. Open, the people in the hunt the last day were names not familiar to people, and it was a fantastic event. So we think the same is going to happen here. For instance, Brittany Lang, who's, who's finished second, is here this week. So we're going to be fine. The only Canadian to win the Canadian Open, Jocelyn Borassa, was busy today helping some junior golfers in downtown Halifax. She says women's golf has come a long way since she won the tournament. It's a million point three U.S. prize. Uh, the winner is going to earn $195,000. In 1973, when I won, the total first was 50000 and the winner got 10000 A big upset in senior men's baseball last night as the first place Orioles suffered only their second loss, 5-3 to the Dodgers. Scott Visso pitched Corey McEwen for the win and the slam run of the Jacks in the opener, 10-2. Six-time defending Tour de France champ Lance Armstrong has maintained the yellow jersey, leading by 38 seconds despite finishing sixth during today's 11th stage. Great discovery team, and, and for a team that was basically written off two, three, four days ago, they came back hard and, and strong, and uh, they inspired me today. And, and, you know, hearing on the radio from Johan that, that Vino's in trouble and Jan's in trouble, it helps the guys, it helps me, and so... Uh, we needed to take time when we could, and today was that day. Five members of the Thunderbolts fared pretty well at the Provincial Long Course Championships in Toronto, finishing third overall in the small team division. Rachel Olson picked up a gold and two silvers, while Adam Postumus was runner-up twice. The Thunder Bay Chill leave tomorrow for Sioux Falls in a pair of league games with the Spitfire 
starting Friday night. And the big story in sports today, the NHL lockout is over. A ten of six-year deal. Uh, the owners and uh, uh, the players will vote on it next Wednesday and Thursday. The owners, Board of Governors will meet on Thursday and then it starts signing players. And uh, by the way, I just figured out, Barry, Chicago's got a 6% chance of getting Sidney Crosby. The Leafs have a 2% chance. That's all right. Th and about the same odds of either one of them winning the cup, I'm sure. <laughs> That's about it. All right. Thanks very much, Randy. <laughs> All right, now I told you before, Wednesday nights are my favorite and only nights that I like watching TV because of the whole Dancing with the Stars. That's over, but I found a new program to watch on Wednesday nights. That's the Antique Roadshow. That's on tonight, and with Stiffle. more on what else is happening on Thunder Bay Television, here's Jen O'Reilly. Well, is it hot enough for you? If, if it isn't, or if it is, uh, stay inside, cool off, okay? Great lineup on Thunder Bay Television, starting us off on uh, Thunder Bay Television at CKPR. It's the Canadian Antiques Roadshow at 8 o'clock. Valerie Pringle and her team of experts travel this time to St. John's, New Brunswick to find some valuables. The Fifth Estate follows at 9 p.m. Now, uh, this is kind of an update show. They're updating a lot of the stories in the past, so if you are a fan of the show, you'll be interested to hear, you know, what exactly has happened over the last couple years. On Thunder Bay Television and CTV, it's Canadian Idol at 7.30. This is the results of the Wild Card Show. And following Canadian Idol, a new show, Brat Camp. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. It starts at eight o'clock. Now the question is, what would you do with the teen who curses at you, breaks the law in your house, um, you know, doesn't listen to anything you say? I'd send them to the in-laws, but they have a better answer here. Uh, nine families are dealing with out-of-control teenagers whose uh, ages range from 14 to 17, and they have to make the tough choice and send their kids to this place called Sage Walk, the wilderness school in the wilds of Oregon for a period of more than 50 days in hopes to get back the children that they once knew. So find out if it actually works tonight at 8 o'clock. And Law & Order follows at 10 when a jockey is shot down. Police go down the stretch and look for the killer at the racetrack. Hope you enjoy. I've always loved cars. I love selling cars. We constantly search the market for the very best values and bring them home to you. Cars, trucks, vans, always a great selection. A great reason to shop Peterson's, but there's many more. On-the-spot bank and credit union financing. Payments to fit your budget. No add-ons or hidden costs. Plus car proof. Now get the complete history of your vehicle. You'll also get low-rate financing. And if credit's a problem, Peterson's will help. So shop happy. Shop Peterson's for top value and great choices in cars, trucks, and vans. I really do love cars. Across the nation, brown cows are joining together to fight for equality. What do we want? Brown cows know that just like white milk, chocolate milk contains 15 essential nutrients that can help kids build strong, healthy bodies. Don't hate me because I'm delicious! You can help bring fair play and equal opportunity to brown cows everywhere. Two, four, six, eight! Chocolate milk is really great! Serve chocolate milk and make a brown cow proud. I'm a brown cow and I approve this message. If you're looking for quality furniture and mattresses at the lowest possible prices, Furniture Factory Outlets in Thunder Bay is now open. 100% Italian leather by distinctive designs, emotion true suede sofas, loves, and sectionals by Kroler, the world's best selling chiropractor endorsed sleep systems by King Coil, featuring premium mattress sets by Alan Joanna Body Break. We purchase full truckloads factory direct to save you money, and most furniture and mattresses are in stock for next day delivery. Furniture Factory Outlets, located on the corner of Northern Avenue and Vickers, open seven days a week. Need mosquito protection that works? You're gonna love off mosquito lamp. The candle creates a pleasant glow, while the heat activated pad kills mosquitoes. It's a unique way to effectively protect your patio from mosquitoes. Off mosquito lamp keeps bugs off. Essie Johnson, a family company. Pick up your refills and stay protected for up to an additional 12 hours. We were the first to offer stow and go seating. The first SUV with driver's side airbags. The first to win the top three car awards in one year. And we're celebrating a year of firsts with another. For the first time in Canada, we are offering all Canadians employee pricing, plus up to $5,500 in dealer discounts on selected vehicles. Visit your participating Chrysler Jeep Dodge retailer today and take advantage of the first employee pricing offer in Canada. 
You'll love every minute in the sun with the Little Mermaid. Crisp cottons and linen, opulent silks and lace. Indulge yourself with Susan Bristol Sports and Dresswear. Whatever your destination, feel pretty and poised in spanners, dramatic and ladylike tailored coordinates. Celebrate your commitment to joy and love with romantic bridal gowns created by the award-winning designer Jessica McClintock. Beautiful, ultra-feminine formal wear by Ursula of Switzerland. The finest selection for mother of the bride. Fit for celebrity glamour, shoes by Nina. Proud sponsor of the Miss Universe pageant. Summer is the Little Mermaid for fashions that stay in fashion. And now the weather, brought to you by Thunder Bay's Best Rock, Rock 94. Well, you know something's wrong when warm weather and sunny skies is getting something that everybody wants to see end, right, Jen? It's awful. We're complaining about this, and, and you know that winter is just around the corner, right? A couple people I was talking to today were saying, actually one guy, one gentleman said to me today, he likes this weather because he knows winter is coming very soon. So we got to make the best of it. Um, yesterday, you know, we had the uh, Thunder Bay warning, or watch I guess was in effect. Now it's affecting uh, southern Alberta and southern Ontario today. So they've got that coming to them. Um, really hot temperatures across the country, so we're not the only ones, especially in the prairies, extremely warm uh, temperatures. We'll start off in Vancouver for predicted highs across the country. Uh, Vancouver hit uh, about 22, partly cloudy skies there. Warming up when we head into Calgary, 26, mainly sunny. Regina, 33, partly uh, cloudy. Winnipeg, 32, mainly sunny there. Toronto hitting 33 with partly cloudy skies. Uh, Montreal, 29, partly cloudy. A severe thunderstorm watch in effect in Montreal. Uh, Fredericton, we hit 21 there. Halifax, uh, 17 with some, I think some sunny skies, a few little clouds. In, uh, in, in uh, St. John's, it's uh, 26 with a little bit of cloud cover there. On to uh, our, our region, across the region, I guess, a little closer look to home. Sunshine pretty much everywhere, except in Houghton. It's uh, partly cloudy there, 28. Marathon, 27. Geraldton, sunshine, 25. Armstrong, sunshine, uh, 27. Kenora, Sioux, look out, all sunny there. In Atacokan, 29. In Uppsala, 27. Uh, Fort Francis, areas like that, uh, Dryden, Red Lake, very sunny there and very warm, 30 in Red Lake, Dryden, 29, Duluth, 28, Pickle Lake, 27, a big trout lake, 26, Terrace Bay hitting 27 with sunshine as well, and Sault Ste. Marie, 29, sunshine there. Onto our regional satellite map to show you kind of what happened throughout the day today. Not a lot. Let's set it into motion and you can see pretty much no clouds coming over the Thunder Bay area. A little bit in the northwest, some light cloud cover there. And I'll show you what's going to be happening in our systems map for the next couple days. Uh, high pressure system right here, you can see that is moving a little bit out of the area. However, we do have that warm air mass situated right over top of us. Also a little bit into Manitoba. That is going to stick around for the next two days two days, three days, four days actually, even into the weekend. And I'll explain more details in the weather forecast. For Atacook and Uppsala tonight, a few clouds tomorrow, sunny. Um, a high of 30 tomorrow for Atacook and Uppsala. Sapir and North Nipigon and Marathon. Tonight, uh, some cloudy periods, clearing near midnight though. And a low of 18 tomorrow, sunshine on the way, high 27. For Thunder Bay, a few clouds tonight, a low of 14. Tomorrow, sunshine on the way, high 27. So it's a little cooler tomorrow, okay, but uh, Looking into the weekend, it gets a little warmer. Friday, mix of sun and cloud, high 27. For Saturday, mix sun and cloud, high 29, a low 15. For Sunday, same thing. A little bit of sunshine, a little bit of cloud cover, high 26, a low of uh, 15. For weather facts, uh, today's high 28, overnight low 19. Normals for this time of year, usually about uh, 25 or 11 for the low. High set in 1974. 35. We're getting pretty close to it, but not quite, and a low of 6.1 in 1949. Sunrise happening tomorrow at 7 or 6.11, excuse me. I don't, I, don't I actually am right now. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, sunset tomorrow at 9.54 p.m. You would be my best friend if you bought me one, Lindsay. Uh, UV index tomorrow is <laughs> 9 or very high. So, you know, as usual, that advice, cover up your head, okay? Put on a hat and some sunscreen. That's your weather forecast. Some world class entertainment coming to Thunder Bay. And ladies, get ready. I'm told the hottest artist on the Canadian music scene is also coming to the city. We get more with Lindy Arnone in tonight's Front Row Center. Some world class entertainment is coming to the Bay this fall. Here's the lineup for the ice show coming to the Fort William Gardens September 19th. Jamie Soleil and David Pelche, along with Alexa Yagoon, Brian Orser, 
Stephen Cousins, Jennifer Robinson, and Yuka Sato. Now, this show is guaranteed to sell out, so you'll want to get your tickets soon. They are on sale now, and they're available by calling the Gardens box office at 625 2929. The show is honoring AIDS Thunder Bay's 20th anniversary. And platinum recording artist Sean Desmond will be in Thunder Bay for one night only. You don't want to miss this concert. He'll be here this Saturday, July 16th over at the former Alamo Bar. Now Wharf 9 tickets are 20 bucks each and are available at Wharf 9 and Frankie's Pizzeria on Memorial Avenue. That's Front Row Center. I'm Lindsay Arno. Front Row Center has been brought to you by Thunder Bay's Best Rock, Rock 94. A chance for some young Thunder Bay residents to learn some new business skills today. That story and more as your Wednesday News Hour continues. You should buy this one. Look at the EnerGuide rating. Only 176 kilowatt hours a year. That's important. It's very important. Using Energy Star appliances can help you meet the one ton challenge. Oh. And if you fill out this pledge form, you could win Eco Superior's one ton challenge prize package. Tell us about it, Bob. It's a prize package worth over $4,000. Enter online at ecosuperior.com. You may not remember what time dinner's at. Well, the Thunder Bay Biz Kids found out today what it takes to become entrepreneurs. The program, being put on by the Northwest Ontario Technology Center, had them hawking their wares all across the city. The youngsters taking part were selling strawberries at a number of locations. The goal for the kids to try and sell more baskets than the other groups taking part. And aside from just learning the dollars and cents of basic business, these kids also brought some new ideas of their own to the table. It's a lot about advertising and, and dealing with the people. So they, they have their own ideas on, on profit and, and how to run their own little businesses, but actually dealing with the people is, is really what they're getting out of today. So do you think we have future entrepreneurs among us? Oh, very much so. You'd be surprised what these little guys can come up with. Um, it was a very good experience, and I'm really glad I got to do it this year because this camp was kind of a follow-up for last year's camp too. And so with knowing stuff from last year, this year, I got to know even more on top of that. The strawberries that the kids were selling were donated by Blues Farms. The program also received a great deal of help from Valley Fresh. Be a mm. terrific salesperson. Very right? nice. Yep. Recapping our top story of the day, hockey fans across Canada and across around the world celebrating. We finally have a tentative agreement in the NHL players dispute. They should be ratifying that contract next week and it's full steam ahead for a hockey season as we move into the fall. Randy Sheffield will have more tonight on the late edition. But for now, that'll do it for this evening's look at news, weather, and sports. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.